Hi everyone, in this episode of Risk Chat, we are here with Christian Salmani, the Dynamic Style and Heritage Director for Western Consulting. Hi Christian, Hello. how are you? Hello, it's nice to see you. How are you? Great. All well, Christian, and uh, how is Geneva? Well, we have a beautiful weather and uh, it's still summertime and uh, uh, we're supposed to have a nice weekend, so uh, so um, so far so good. Great, great. So I'll straight away dive into my first question, which is which has to be about the return of two 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 after forty five years. So what went into the this re edition? What went into its making? Tell us some behind the scenes stories about it. Yeah. All right. So um, you know, as 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 we know, or as you may know. So the 222 or the 222 has been the very first uh, Vacheron Constantin Sport Elegant collection. And uh, it was launched in 1977 uh, at the occasion of the 222nd anniversary of Vacheron Constantin. So this is why uh, it, has, it bears the name 222. So, um, you know, this collection, um, <clears throat> this collection uh, is very much uh, appreciated by collectors on the secondary market. I would say people who are really into vintage collectors and vintage lovers, and um, especially I would say uh, there is one model within the collection which is really the, the, the star of the, of the collection, and this is the Jumbo model. So the Jumbo model, uh, in fact, is the largest model of the collection, so 37 millimeter. And um, in 2022, you know, kind of playing with the numbers, so uh, we, we decided to revamp and to recreate a redesign or reintegrate, I would say, this iconic uh, a spot uh, elegant timepiece from the 70s in our historic collection. So that was the that was our, our ID. And um, as a matter of fact, I would say the, the Jumbo 222 from 1977 uh, was made in, in different materials, uh, notably uh, steel, uh, steel and gold, and uh, full yellow gold. And so we decided to uh, recreate or re, uh, redesign the jumbo in yellow gold, you know, um, this absolutely flamboyant uh, color of, of the 70s. And so uh, so that is really the idea behind to introduce in the historic collection um, uh, another iconic timepiece from Vachon Constantin, uh, as we have in the historic collection, which is like the American 1921, for example, or the historic chronogra chronograph, Corn de Vache, Cowhorn Lux. So, you know, these watches are very famous among collectors. And so the, the 222 or the 222 is really, is really, uh, was really uh, the ideal candidate to, uh, to be incorporated in, the, in this uh, family. You also launched uh, very recently the first ladies' uh, traditional foot pencil calendar watch. And I mean, people do know that you've been making, Vashra has been making ladies' watches for over two centuries. But uh, in recent years, how has this particular segment been doing for the brand? And how was the response to this recent launch? Okay. Very good question, indeed. So um, we are, you know, since uh, since several years uh, now, we are, we are seeing really uh, a growing interest uh, from our our ladies' uh, clientele for technical timepieces. Uh, so we we had already in our collection some models that um, with complications that were mostly dedicated to the feminine universe. And uh, in February 2020, uh, we launched, as as you know, the Ejeri collection which is really a design dedicated to the to the ladies universe and in the Ejeri collection we have uh, also one complicated model so you see we are really uh, as we are always you know uh, very client centric or, or close to to our clients expectations we wanted really to to carry on with development of complicated watches uh, dedicated to the ladies universe i'd like to mention as well in the traditional collection we launched uh, recently the um, traditional tourbillon um for ladies and uh, this year as you were mentioning at watches and wonders it was uh we we, we came with that with one imp very important novelty in the traditional collection which is the uh, traditional uh, perpetual calendar ultra thin uh, dedicated to ladies in two versions uh pink gold and and white gold so um you know it's really um it's showcasing really the 
the great interest that Vacheron Constantin has for technical high-end timepieces. And as you were mentioning at the very beginning, uh, we are doing uh, what is um, dedicated to ladies since more than two centuries. And um, one interesting anecdote that uh, I can give you is that uh, we have uh, in we we made already striking watches like quarter repeaters uh, for ladies already in the first half of the 19th century. So you know, when 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 we think that you know grand complications uh, for ladies is, is something which is relatively new uh, in in the field of uh, high uh, high watchmaking. As a matter of fact, Vachon Constantin was doing this kind of uh, grand complications uh, more than two centuries ago. So I think you know we are we are you know we are continuing in our path of um, of designing, developing, and offering uh, I would say the the highest standards in 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 fine watchmaking from simple to very complicated and uh, to to uh, to our masculine and feminine clientele. Wonderful, wonderful, Christian. Uh, the other collection which I'm very very fascinated with and I'm always looking forward to new pieces and that collection is the La collection or which where you bring in vintage uh, watches from Vashron from all over and put them together to be presented again uh, to your uh, clients. Uh, this was introduced in 2005 if I'm not wrong. How have you developed this particular collection and what does it take to put together these selective time pieces? Yeah, thank you very much. So I think uh, the vintage watches is another very interesting topic to discuss with you. So you are right. So um, we started to uh, to offer some uh, vintage watches uh, during uh, some, I think it, it was probably 2005 or 2006. Uh, some uh, some vintage watches um, that were offered in our in our boutiques um, for clients who really wanted to to have an alternative to to new watches, but um, we have to consider the the you know the enormous interest and the growth of the secondary market. Uh, I would say vintage watches since now I don't know five five years or, or more. So in 2017, we decided to totally uh, revamp this uh, this uh, offer, which is Le Collectionneur, by creati creating a 360 degrees uh, concept uh, around vintage watches. So in a nutshell, we are selecting uh, on the secondary market um, Vachon Constantin vintage timepieces. They have to be more than 20 years, um, uh, or they have to be to have more than 20 years of existence. And we are selecting actually uh, watches from the very beginning of the 20th century until, say, um, the middle of the 90s. And um, we are selecting um, with a great care uh, different type of watches. So we are selecting pocket watches, which uh, which may be simple and uh, complicated. And of course, uh, wristwatches, uh, simple, mid complication and high complications. So by doing so, we really want to cover uh, most of the aspects of Vachon Constantin and watchmaking art. And so uh, through the collectioner, uh, demonstrating uh, Vachon Constantin uh, creativity, longevity, great heritage, history, uh, design, technicality, etc. So um, this is um, this is for us a great, um, uh, I would say a great support in order to, um, you know, to for, for, for clients who might be new to, to, the, to the Maison. To, uh, to know better the universe of Vachon Constantin. And so <clears throat> Les Collectionneurs, uh, these days we, we are really facing a, a, a very, there is a great interest for Les Collectionneurs watches. And uh, this, is, uh, this is an offer which will remain always very exclusive because we are selecting really, you know, iconic, emblematic designs, um, important timepieces from the past. And um, we, uh, we are selecting really watches in uh, in in very nice condition, and uh, in uh, in our concept of le collectioner, we do uh, not uh, want to touch the watches. Basically, let's say for example, uh, if if there are some scratches or oxidation um, on the timepiece, um, we we as much as possible we are we are we are keeping the watches as they are because you know this uh, these traces of the of the the time passing on the watches is something that collectors really love. What we do actually, we are we are servicing and uh, sometimes restoring the movement, 
And if we have to exchange uh, several components uh, inside the timepiece, we replace the, say, broken or damaged component by a new one, but a new one which is from a new old stock, meaning we are using stocks of components that are coming from, for example, from the 20s, from one and years ago. So you see uh, what we want really to do is to preserve the authenticity of the timepiece. And uh, last but not least, so we are we are offering these watches um, through um, through our our boutiques or some our boutiques, and we are offering a two years guarantee uh, and a certificate of authenticity using blockchain technology. So I think for people who are really looking for a, you know a, a genuine original Vachon Constantin vintage timepiece, this is really the best offer that 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 can be done on the market. I must say it's a wonderful marriage of past and present. Vintage watches presented with warranty, like a blockchain technology form. Great, great effort. So coming to my next question, uh, do you think uh, that the appreciation for vintage watches among uh, younger collectors has, you know, kind of really grown in the past few years? And what kind of pieces are they really looking for, especially vis-a-vis -vis your brand? Yes, I think you are absolutely true. Uh, so, so, um, so what we see, <clears throat> what we see uh, through uh, Le Collectionneur uh, uh, to stay to stay in the vintage uh, watches, um, we see that there is a great interest for for say I would say young clientele, people who are, you know, uh, in their twenties or early thirties, and. Um, <clears throat> I think I think this this uh, this great interest for for vintage watches um, by the by new generations is uh, maybe resides in the fact that these watches are um, you know you know they were mostly handmade um, they they were made by I would say they were handmade they you know they are they are they were very let's say uh, watches which are coming from from the analog world rather than the digital world of today so i think these watches they also carry each watch carries its own story and i think that that this this is what uh, our clients really love in these watches and i personally i have met many clients <coughs> uh interested in vintage watches and uh uh, you know, some of them. They, I remember one, one, one person, one client who, who is uh, 20, 28 years old, and he has already three vintage Vachon Constantin, and he's really passionate about this. So I think yes, it's great for us to. It's a great way to connect, and to discuss, and to uh, and to uh, about uh, about our watches uh, with a, uh, with a, um, I would say young young collectors, definitely. Great. So, Christine, what's the challenge involved? What are the challenges involved in keeping mechanical watchmaking and the old one of the oldest watch brands in the world still relevant for millennials, relevant for younger audience? How how do you yes. do that? I, I think this is the, the great challenge for, for the designers, uh, uh, your, your question. So um, I think Vachon Constantin has a tremendous uh, history. So as we know, you know, we were created in 1755. And um, I think um, this, this is a, this is a company which always um, um, had um, I would say a classic style, very high standards of of of, uh, of, of execution, um, and also um, a style which is very refined, sophisticated. And um, this is uh, this is something that we we really have to to maintain in today's watches. So so these days, I think that. Um, um to really attract uh, our potential uh, uh, younger young clients i think there is something which is highly important for for us and for them and this is authenticity in the sense that uh, we we are doing our own movements uh, in house and uh, on top of that we are uh, finishing our movement by hand so you know this handmade finishing, this very high standards of uh, of finishings, and uh, the respect for this tradition is something which is highly important. And I think this is a very important point for 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 the younger generation when they consider our watches of today. Right. So uh, tell me, uh, Vachon Constantin is one of those brands which has been able to strike the perfect balance between classical. Uh, represented by your historic collection and you know new sporty young uh, represented by the overseas 
So actually, which of these two represents the true DNA of the brand? Uh, I think both. I think both, honestly. I think, you know, uh, both why? <clears throat> because um, if if we if we turn our eyes to, 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 to the history of Vachon Constantin, what do we see? We see that Vachon Constantin has always had, a, you know, a, a very impressive diversity in design, style, um, expressions, areas of expertise, territories of expression. And so, um, as, and, and uh, considering this uh, this diversity in style and, and design, I still that the Maison has always managed to maintain its, uh, its, uh, its I would say, its um, own style in the sense that when, when we speak about the Bachelon Constantin style, uh, as I was mentioning right before, so it's, for me, it's all about uh, elegance, sophistication, classicism, sometimes with a twist. And, and uh, I think that this is, this is really th these elements which are very important when we speak about the DNA of the brand. And so uh, if I take, for example, one patrimony timepiece, uh, I, I would say that this watch is classic, elegant, sophisticated, refined. And now if I take an overseas, uh, honestly, uh, the words would be the same. So for me, um, all the collections of Bachelon Constant are really representing or or let's say um, encapsulating this uh, this uh, notion of style and uh, of so these different elements which are creating together the style of Vachon Constantin. The overseas collection has seen a tremendous growth in recent years uh, in the primary market as well as in the last two years in secondary market as well. But do you think uh, that the market has reached the peak for steel watches or do you think that it's, it's going to continue with the kind of popularity it has earned over the years? I wish I knew. I wish I knew. <laughs> So, so I think you know um, uh, what. What do we see uh, when we speak about uh, sport elegant timepieces uh, today? So, uh, as you are saying, the the market is really the, the demand is very high. Uh, so, obviously, there is a big trend, a very important trend, um, which we could we could say about uh, steel with integrated bracelets, sometimes seventies inspired. So, you know um, what we speak about. Uh, so, there is a great interest and. Um, I, we see no sign of uh, of a decreasing interest for 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 this this kind of watches, and uh, maybe to to carry on with the, with with some explanation and trying to answer properly to the question. So I think as well, you know, this kind of watches they are really very well. I would say they they are fitting super well with uh, I think today's world, in the sense that um, <clears throat> our clients they really appreciate uh, the possibility to wear uh, auto horlogerie timepiece. With a prestigious movement, you know, handmade finishing, uh, which we we spoke about, and in addition, you know, in a, in a, in a watch that we could wear at any occasion. Uh, uh, and uh, if we think about the past, if we, if we if we jump back to the to I don't know to the 60s or the 50s, so usually you when you were going out at the theater, you were wearing I would say a, a ultra thin uh, timepiece in gold on on leather strap. Then, if you had to go, uh, I don't know, if, if you if you have to go uh, for for doing sports, you you would change and 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 wear another timepiece. And so the watches, they you know they were really designed for for a specific activity. And these days, I think uh, typically overseas is is super is a super versatile timepiece, uh, especially because we have this fabulous uh, self interchangeability system for the bracelet, which gives you the opportunity to change the to change the aesthetic of the timepiece. So. To come back to your question, I think um, these uh, sport elegant uh, watches, steel on steel mostly, they are perfectly uh, in line with, with with the world of today. And so, for this reason, I think that they will still be in the next uh, in the coming years uh, very successful. We'll see. Okay, let's. Great. Let's talk about uh, projects like the tribute to great civilizations. What does it take? What kind of planning, conceptualization, and execution does it take to put together an exquisite collection like this and collaboration with the Louvre and other important cultural places? So, first of all, thank you very much for your comment about the exquisite collection. We really appreciate. So, um, okay, so uh, to talk about Metier d'Art and Tribute to Great Civilization. So, um, so we, uh, we made this partnership with the Musée of the Louvre in 2019. 
and uh, this is a this is a partnership which has multiple uh, multiple uh, ac uh, actions or, or initiatives. But as a matter of fact, since the the beginning of the partnership, we thought about creating a collection of uh, of timepiece of metadata timepiece, uh, which would be uh, connected or, or even more than that. We, we would we would we wanted to create together a collection of timepiece celebrating um, uh, civilizations and uh, in addition, of course, inc incorporating some of the most important. Uh, um, masterpieces of, Le, of the Musée of the Louvre. And so uh, we started to work, uh, actually, so the design work of Vachon Constantin has been um, visiting the Louvre several times, and there has been a lot of discussions between the design team of Vachon Constantin and the curators of the Louvre. And we can really uh, talk about, uh, you know, co-creation uh, co in terms of concept or conceptualization. And so, um, so after I would say our des the designer who has been in charge of the project, so she really once once she she selected together with our with our colleagues of the Louvre the different uh, subjects for each civilization. So 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 we really um, uh, created the timepieces, and um, while still being in contact with the, with the Louvre for 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 different aspects. Uh, notably, in order to make sure that uh, everything in the watches would be totally relevant from the civilization, from the era, and uh, and 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 aspects like that. So you see, so this is a really, uh, I think the 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 result of this collection, uh, which is I think very impressive, is really a showcasing. Uh, I would say. Um, the the very uh, enthusiastic and and super positive attitude of both uh, of both partners uh, all along the the, the process of uh, designing and developing this collection. Great. How do you see the brand style evolve over the next decade? What do you think would be the high points? Well, uh, we spoke a lot uh, about about uh, the style of Vachon Constantin, which was really great, uh, by the way. And uh, so I think you know. Uh, once again, so, okay. So we have seen that we are very, very much um, attached to uh, to uh, to maintain, you know, this um, classic, uh, sophisticated expression of uh, of, uh, of fine watchmaking, and uh, also still maintaining this traditional craft. Uh, talking about uh, metal art and talking about uh, handmade finishing. So I think uh, I think it it will be. Um, we will continue to evolve, obviously, because we know that um, uh, I think I think it, the idea is really not to to stick to the past and to and to do watches which are really paying tribute to the great heritage, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. No, we want to create uh, watches which are totally uh, in line with today, so very contemporary and addressed to uh, to uh, to our clients uh, all over the world today. So, uh, so it's always for us. It will be always for us um, a matter of balancing our tradition and know-how with, uh, while still looking at the world of today, and bringing, uh, bringing, I would say, qualities that are expected uh, uh, from our clients. So, uh, I think the style of Vachon Constantin may evolve a little bit, but not that much. I think because, as we have seen, it's very important for us. But why not? Uh, you know, coming to. Um, incorporating uh, some some potentially new techniques or technologies or why not new materials in order to uh, to to you know to um, to um, to bring benefits at the end of the day for our clients and i think uh, with this respect uh, typically overseas for example uh, what we have seen with the limited edition everest is something that 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 could be a good uh, a good um, a good example of uh, how we could uh, we could evolve for example evolve for example overseas in the next years um and so um so this is this is what we intend to do okay and if you had to pick your five favorite all-time favorite national watches would which ones would those be oh yeah i love that question so great so <laughs> so yeah so it's a great question so okay so you know i i'm um has a as a style and heritage director of the of the company so I've been uh, I had the chance to to see uh, many Vachon Constantin I have to say. So um, if I had to choose five watches uh, from Vachon Constantin, uh, there are some which which are which are really um, yeah which are really um, I would say mandatory for me and some others I I, I think about, I have to think about I have some ideas. 
So uh, first of all, I would I would like to mention one time piece uh, from from the 40s and the 50s, which is a reference 4261. So let me tell you where it is. So uh, this is in fact uh, a wristwatch. It's a mini Jupiter, a diameter 36 millimeter from from the 40s. We did uh, approximately the 40 of these watches using a phenomenal movement, which was uh, only 3.2 millimeter thick. And so the result, uh, this timepiece has a totally kind of timeless elegance, uh, super sophistication. Uh, it has a uh, round case, uh, super thin with a uh, teardrop uh, lugs. And for me, this is uh, the quintessential Vachon Constantin wristwatch. So that is my favorite. Um, uh, um, if I consider vintage watches of Vachon Constantin, it's a dream of a watch for me. So um, then uh, my second watch now, uh, I I will mention a timepiece from 1960 from from the 60s, which is nicknamed the Batman. So why this this nickname is because the lugs of this timepiece look look like a bit you know the ears of of the Batman uh, suit. So this is uh, in fact this is a chronometer from the 60s, which has a tremendous personality, and for me that timepiece um, really. Uh, you know, is really the example of the, the Vacheron Constantin with a twist uh, uh, um, style expression. Because on one side, you have a very strict uh, chronometer, you have a very readable dial, a, a round case, but you have four lugs which are enormous and are, which are really very present. So I love, you know, this tension which is created by classic design on one side, but this fantasy of uh, incorporating uh, totally unexpected lugs. So the Batman from the 60s would be my 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 my, my second time piece. And then uh, we, are, we have to talk about the 70s. So um, as we know, the 70s was a decade of, you know, breaking the codes, um, you know, uh, rebellion in a way in many, many aspects. And of course, uh, extreme creativity in many aspects of um, of design, so industrial design, fashion, etc. And uh, I would mention the, the, the 1972 uh, Prestige de la France, which is um, asymmetrical and cambered, a unique design which was uh, which was totally it, it, with, 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 which was never seen before. And um, for me, that timepiece uh, Prestige de la France really. Uh, once again, encapsulate the the spirit of of this of this era, and it was also a very uh, you know a kind of unisex timepiece. And uh, if we remember well, uh, the seventies was also a decade of you know and uh, on Andre Eugene, I'm not sure of the term in English, um, but um, think about you know. Uh, um, for example, when uh, when Yves Saint Laurent created the tuxedo for ladies, it was it was supposed to be a scandal, you know. And I think that watch really reflects this decade of of of, of su supreme creativity, and I love it very much. So I think I have uh, three watches already, and I'm talking a lot about them. Sorry for that. So the next one will be a timepiece from 2000, 2000, 2006. I love the meetings with them. So please <laughs> be elaborate. <laughs> So, so, the, so yeah. next time piece, it's a time piece from 2006. So I'm talking about the Patrimony uh, 40 millimeter manual winding. Uh, this is, I think, this is the uh, this is the perfect. Uh, I would say this is the perfect example of Vachon Constantin classic style of today. But in 2006, we made a limited edition of 150 time pieces, which were fully crafted in platinum, meaning the case was in platinum. But uh, the dial as well was in platinum. So the dial was made uh, with a plate of platinum, which was simply uh, sandblasted, and and there is no varnish, anything, anything on except uh, gold indexes. And the result is a very uh, monochromatic, you know, a kind of stealth uh, timepiece, super sophisticated, super simple, super impressive. And for me, I always had. Um, in my mind, the feeling that this, this timepiece had a kind of Zen spirit. You see, think about a Japanese Zen garden, a stone garden. So that is for me, uh, I would say, uh, my yeah, I think this is my favorite, uh, uh, let's say, modern Bachon Constantin. And uh, so I think I had four. And the fifth one uh, will be a ladies' timepiece. Um, I think, what, uh, some maybe um, eight years ago, I think, 
we made a Metedar series uh, dedicated to, to ladies, uh, which was a florilege, Metedar florilege, um, which in fact, <clears throat> we, um, we were inspired by, by a book, an art book, uh, which, were, which is called The Temple of Flora. Uh, in this book, we have, uh, we have um, paintings or representation of, uh, of exotic or not exotic flowers in the Kew Gardens uh, in, in, in the UK. And uh, we made this series uh, using two uh, decorative crafts. First of all, um, we, we, we have been using hand guillotage uh, on the background of the dial to really create uh, life and three-dimensional uh, three effects um, on, on the background. And um, then this is, uh, this is a cloisonne enamel uh, with vibrant colors. And uh, I think for me, these watches were just uh, absolutely awesome. I was blown away, uh, especially with one of the series, which was the tulips. And um, well, actually, this is for me, uh, you know, again, we are talking about Vachon Constantin's sophisticated style and, and elegance. And for me, this, this timepiece well, had absolutely everything. And, uh, you know, if you if you can look at, the, at, at this timepiece, you really feel like you are very close from, from, from an art piece in the sense that uh, the way it is, uh, it looks a bit like, you know, Roy Lichtenstein or Andy Warhol uh, paintings. So I think it's an amazing timepiece. So, of course, all these uh, five choices are purely personal. Okay, great. So we've talked at length about uh, the brand style and the brand's heritage, and I, we, we all love your style, and uh, we, I'd like to know what's your personal definition of style? What does style mean to you? Uh, um, <clears throat> yes, I, th I think style, style, um, style expresses uh, your character, personality, um, imagination as well. And um, it's it's showing really a part of your personality. So it's showing also your, your creativity. So, and uh, I think style is, is a very, I think is a very important aspect uh, of your, of your, of, of your visible personality. Yeah. I'm trying to do, uh, do my best with this difficult question, but uh, this is what I think. <laughs> okay, so we've had uh, quite a number of lengthy questions. I have a set of short questions, which is our rapid fire round. So you have to give me the answer in one word or try to limit it to two words. So suits or shorts, what do you like wearing more? Suits. Suits. Overseas or historic? I was born in the 50s, so historic. Two yeah. things you can't do without, which are the most important things in your life. Two things you can't do without. Uh, yes, uh, I'm, I'm so, uh, yeah, I'm almost sorry to say that, but uh, my, my MacBook uh, Air, I think, very much. Very important, yes. And, um, <laughs> and uh, some of my pair of glasses as well, really, really. Okay. Okay, who is your favorite style icon? Um, I have none, honestly. I okay. I do interest myself in style and fashion, but in a very, uh, if I may say, naive way. And I I I, I love to follow um, things that I find nice. And I I'm I'm not exactly a kind of follower guy. You know, I I like things to be the way I think, and I don't really care about what people think of it. Great. So movies or books? What do you like? Most? Books. Books. Okay. Your favorite artist? Oh, I was going to say immediately David Bowie. So I'll keep him. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Christine. Great fun talking to you as always. And thank you so much for taking the time. That and was a great I, pleasure to be with you. Okay. Have a wonderful and I hope evening. You so thank, thank you. you. Goodbye. All right. Bye.